Tonight, the deadly cross-country storm that's left more than a million without power. Tornadoes tearing through the south, damaging homes and businesses, at least 11 dead. The storm now pounding the interior northeast, while in Southern California, residents trapped in their homes for a week. Some even writing, help us in the snow. Another snowmaker now hitting the state. Air turbulence turns fatal. A passenger killed on a private jet after encountering severe turbulence. To have someone actually die means that uh, something traumatic really must have happened. Just days after this flight was rocked so hard, seven people went to the hospital. What you need to know. A tanker truck explodes on the highway in Maryland. Nearby homes up in flames. Look at this. Look at this. The new mugshot of Alec Murdoch, head shaved. And the new interview with a juror, the one piece of evidence he says convinced him Murdoch was guilty. Reports of new gas attacks targeting girls' schools across Iran. Girls collapsing, hundreds hospitalized. The major medical study on a statin alternative to lower cholesterol, how it could help millions. This is NBC Nightly News with Jose diaz Ballard. Good evening. Millions of Americans on both coasts are dealing with major snowfall right now. This is the scene in Northern California where they're expected to see as much as five feet of snow. In the southern part of that state, residents are still trapped in their homes, many running low on food and supplies after getting a rare snowstorm one week ago. Take a look at this. That same storm system has traveled across much of the U.S., leaving a trail of destruction and death. In the south, they are cleaning up today after an outbreak of tornadoes and flooding that left nearly a dozen dead. And the northeast isn't spared either, with snow coming down on millions right now. Janice Mackey Freyer is tracking the storms and starts us off tonight. Tornado crossing the road right in front of us. Tonight, the death toll rising after a string of twisters pounded the south. At least 11 dead across five states following yesterday's storms. Keep going, keep going, keep going, let's go. This powerful tornado hitting Friday near Winsboro, Texas, about 100 miles east of Dallas, leaving a trail of destruction. Debris getting oh, lost in the air. Big house, just hit a house. In southwest Kentucky, a state of emergency after a tornado destroyed homes, uprooted trees, and knocked down power lines. Just all at once, everything just kept falling. The roof, the insulation, everything just kept falling on me. That same potent storm system now reaching the northeast. With already over a foot of snow in some areas, you can see it piling up near Boston. My goodness. Severe weather has lashed the U.S. coast to coast for weeks. California in the bullseye. Back-to-back -back storms have dumped an astonishing 12 and a half feet of snow in some parts of the state. About two hours east of Los Angeles, the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department reporting more than a thousand phone calls with pleas for assistance. A sign of desperation, help us, seen written in the snow. People there trapped and running low on food, supplies and patience. Our street hasn't been plowed for 11 days. People have been calling 911. We need help. Roads are closed and slick with ice, and there's so much snow, the roof of the only grocery store in this small community collapsed. I'm able-bodied and I can get around on foot. There are so many people up here that can't. They're stuck in their houses, they've gone around, I've tried to shovel people out, but it's really no point. Janice Mackey Freire is in San Bernardino County. Janice, is there any relief in sight for California? Well, Jose, there is a heavy storm system moving along the west coast. We're feeling the wind picking up here. And there will be snow to the north, but people in Southern California, for the most part, will be spared. Jose? Janice Mackey Freire, thank you. Now to the deadly incident of turbulence in the skies. A passenger on board a private jet has died from injuries sustained after the airplane hit rough air. Now the NTSB is investigating. It's just the latest turbulence-related incident this week. Jesse Kirsch has the details. Tonight, federal investigators are trying to figure out how turbulence in the skies turned deadly. The Federal Aviation Administration says this Bombardier Challenger 300 was flying from New Hampshire to Virginia Friday when it encountered severe turbulence diverting to Connecticut. Uh, this is a tower with a medical emergency, landing runway 6. 
The National Transportation Safety Board says one passenger suffered fatal injuries. In a statement, Bombardier saying it is deeply saddened and will fully support and provide assistance to all authorities as needed, adding, we stand behind our aircraft. What are your first reactions to hearing what we know so far? Well, it's, it's rare to have a fatality in a turbulence encounter. Uh, it's not rare to have serious injuries, broken bones, people being jostled about. But to have someone actually die means that uh, something traumatic really must have happened. Former federal aviation official Jeff Gazzetti says a commercial airliner could have been impacted differently from a private jet. They don't have flight attendants per se, and they don't have people making sure that you're wearing your seatbelts. And because it's a smaller airplane, it does get jostled around more than a larger airplane. It's unclear if the person who died was wearing a seatbelt. The deadly incident coming just two days after officials said seven people aboard a commercial flight from Texas to Germany were hurt following significant turbulence. A source familiar confirming to NBC News actor Matthew McConaughey and his wife Camila Alves McConaughey were on board. She called the incident chaos on Instagram. What would you say to someone who might now be nervous about their next flight? Don't be nervous if you belt yourself in. Familiar advice that tonight has renewed urgency. Jesse Kirsch, NBC News. It was a chaotic scene in suburban Maryland today after a tanker truck carrying flammable liquids overturned and exploded. One person is dead and multiple homes are damaged. Marisa Parra is there. Look at this. A terrifying scene in this Maryland neighborhood. This is insane. A towering inferno looming over homes. Videos from up close show its intensity. It all started when a tanker truck on a nearby highway overturned and exploded. One tanker truck hauling flammable liquid completely engulfed in flames. The powerful flames and heat damaging multiple homes and cars nearby. The smoke could be seen for miles, shutting down that highway in both directions for hours. This is a scary day. The driver of the truck did not survive, but authorities say no one else was hurt. It sounds like every fire truck and ambulance in this county is responding to it. Laura Harrison and her family live so close they heard the explosions from inside their home. Just out of a movie. It was ridiculous. Didn't know what it was. My eyes started burning and I was like, we're done. Get in the house. You could definitely feel the heat coming off it. You could smell it. It smelled like like a gasoline. Authorities tonight say the fires and toxins are contained and pose no environmental threat, which offers small comfort to those who live here. I have a lot of trust, but you know, when it comes to my son's safety, there's only so far trust goes. Marisa, authorities say it's contained, but there's still a lot of cleanup to do. Yeah, you can see some of that cleanup happening behind me. The Maryland Department of the Environment is here. Authorities say that the foam used to fight the fire is environmentally friendly. But, Jose, in terms of next steps, they're not only trying to remove the debris itself, but also remove the earth that that liquid seeped into. Jose. Marisa Parra and Frederick, Maryland, thank you. We are getting our first look at now convicted murderer Alec Murdoch behind bars as he begins two life sentences for the murder of his wife and son. And we are now hearing from one of the jurors about the key piece of evidence that helped him make up his mind. Priscilla Thompson reports from South Carolina. Alec Murdoch, head shaved and in a yellow jumpsuit, sitting behind bars tonight, serving two life sentences for the murder of his wife and son. Juror number 530, identified as James, says one crucial piece of evidence sealed his fate. This Snapchat video, shot by his son Paul minutes before the murders, revealing Murdoch at the scene of the crime, contradicting what he told investigators. Juror James telling Fox News, I think that there's a lot of evidence that points toward Alec, but I feel like that does solidify it. Tonight, Murdoch's attorneys are already planning his appeal. Every other financial misdeed that they could bring in over the last 10 or 15 years was allowed in. We feel um, like that is a very solid ground for an appeal. Murdoch is also facing some 100 charges for alleged financial crimes, from embezzlement to running a drug and money laundering ring and insurance fraud. These prosecutions matter because there are victims, victims who need to be heard. Including the family of Murdoch's former housekeeper, Gloria Satterfield. She died in 2018 after an apparent trip and fall at the family home.
Murdoch confessed to stealing a $4 million settlement from her sons. It ain't about the money. It's like she's a nobody. As much as she's done for them. The double murder case has prompted investigators to revisit Satterfield's death and the 2015 death of 19-year-old Stephen Smith, a classmate of Murdoch's older son, Buster, who was found dead on a road near the Murdoch home. The prominent South Carolina attorney now on the other side of the law. This is only the beginning of Alec Murdoch's legal woes. And Priscilla joins us now from the prison where Murdoch is currently housed. Priscilla, where will he go from there? The Department of Corrections says Murdoch will spend about 45 days here undergoing medical and mental health evaluations before being assigned a maximum security prison where he will live out the rest of his days. Jose? Priscilla Thompson in Columbia, South Carolina. Thank you. Tonight, former President Donald Trump delivered a fiery address at the annual Conservative Political Action Conference taking on President Biden and prominent Republicans. It's one of his first major speeches since announcing his run for the presidency. But as Von Hilliard reports, it's a crowd already in his corner. Donald Trump tonight grabbing the harness of the MAGA base. I'm thrilled to be back at CPAC. The type of Republican activist he's relying on to catapult him back into the White House. We're going to see this battle through to ultimate victory. We're going to make America great again. CPAC, the annual conservative gathering, a wild scene of Republican enthusiasts and a crowd overwhelmingly supportive of Trump's 2024 bid. Donald Trump. I'm a MAGA guy through and through. There's nobody stopping him. What are people coming to buy? Uh, it's like 30 to 1 Trump over DeSantis. An arena most other possible Republican contenders opted to avoid, except for Nikki Haley, the only major declared challenger to Trump. If you're tired of losing, put your trust in a new generation. Haley heckled by several on her way out. A straw poll taken at CPAC shows attendees favoring Trump over Florida Governor Ron DeSantis by more than 40 points. DeSantis did not attend CPAC and is yet to announce a presidential run. Why should he not be the presidential candidate for Republicans? Well, he can be if he wants to be. Why should the folks not turn to him if he makes the case of being a new well, generation? I, I think leader? I've done something that nobody else has been able to do. The conference here filled with Trump allies, including former Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro made unsubstantiated claims of a stolen election in his home country, his supporters attacking the Capitol in January. He gave us his first on-camera interview with a U.S. TV outlet since losing his re-election bid. Would you urge uh, others around the world to resist the election denialism that we have seen play out in America and Brazil? What we want is transparency, he said, and we want to respect the will of the people. And Vaughn joins us now from CPAC. Vaughn, the former president went after those investigations into him as well. That's right, Jose. Former President Trump openly talking about those investigations to the CPRAC crowd from New York to Washington, D.C. to Georgia. Several of them expected to conclude soon. And he suggested to the crowd that these were purely political ploys to get in the way of his own presidential campaign. Jose? Vaughn Hilliard in National Harbor, Maryland. Thank you. Still ahead tonight, terrifying scenes out of Iran. Girls collapsing in school by the hundreds. Are they being poisoned? And the new study out today on a game-changing drug that could help millions with high cholesterol. We are back with a chilling report on what could be a string of mass poisonings at girls' schools across Iran. Hundreds of girls have been hospitalized, including dozens more today. And now the government, which had previously suggested the incidents were fake, is finally investigating. Molly Hunter has more. <laughs> Today, according to local media, a new wave of suspected poisonings of Iranian schoolgirls. In video verified by NBC News, this girl seen slumping over, her friends frantically trying to help. At the same Tehran province school, girls can be seen gasping for air, coughing, their symptoms terrifying, unexplained. Ambulances arriving to take them to the hospital. Across the country today, 16 provinces reported dozens of students falling mysteriously ill, according to local media. NBC News cannot independently verify the cases. In the capital of Tehran, protests here defiant, covering their faces. 
Over the last three months, local media reports suggest that more than a thousand schoolgirls have suffered from mysterious cases of respiratory distress. This girl says, first, we smelled gas in the classroom. And last week, this girl says, her whole body was numb. She couldn't walk. Speaking Friday, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi describing the alleged attacks as the enemy's conspiracy to create fear and despair. And state media reports the country's prosecutor now launching a criminal investigation, but so far no toxicology reports have been released publicly. The authorities have said that they have ordered an investigation into these incidents, um, but we do urge that such investigations should be transparent and the findings be made public to bring the perpetrators to justice. Last week, Iran's deputy health minister said the poisonings were aimed at shutting down education for girls. Today, anger outside the education department. And as more girls fall sick, no one is offering answers. Molly Hunter, NBC News, London. We are back in a moment with a groundbreaking medical study, a new way people with high cholesterol can prevent heart attacks. Now to some major medical news announced just today. Life-saving statins are some of the most prescribed drugs in America. And now there's new research about an alternative that could be a game changer for millions. Dr. John Torres with what you need to know. Heart disease. It's the number one killer in the nation. A major risk factor, high cholesterol that can block arteries leading to heart attack and stroke. But the most common treatment, drugs called statins, can sometimes cause side effects. Dr. Tara Narula is a cardiologist for New York's Lenox Hill Hospital. What are side effects that some people get from statins? It's going to be those muscle or joint aches or pains, which are typically reversible when you stop the statin or even if you lower the dose. But results from a study out today in the New England Journal of Medicine could give new hope to those who need another option. Researchers followed 14,000 patients with or at high risk for heart disease who couldn't tolerate statin side effects. Half got a placebo. The others, a daily dose of an FDA-approved pill called bembidoic acid. After nearly three and a half years, the group taking bembidoic acid showed a drop in LDL, the so-called bad cholesterol, 21% more than with placebo alone. But that's not all. Cleveland Clinic's Dr. Steve Nissen led the study. I would say that the most striking thing that we saw was the 20 percent reduction in heart attacks. That's a pretty big reduction. Researchers call the side effects minimal and include risk of gout and gallstones. Without insurance, bembidoic acid available under the brand name Nexlitol could cost more than $400 a month and there's no generic option yet. What are you going to be telling your patients next week if they come and ask you about this? I will be excited to be able to tell them that there is another option and I think patients are going to be very happy to have something else that they can go to when they can't tolerate statins. One more promising new tool for prevention in the battle against heart disease. Dr. John Torres, NBC News. When we come back, there's good news tonight. The little boy with superpowers. It's so much more than a costume. There's good news tonight about real-life superheroes and the little boy in the battle of his life fighting to inspire others. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Five-year-old Grayson Johnson never shies away from a challenge. Woo! But when the Michigan kindergartner was diagnosed with kidney cancer late last year, his parents Alyssa and CJ were worried their brave little boy had met his match. Tell me a little bit about Grayson. He loves everybody with his whole heart, and he's so kind. I just want to say I love you. So when it came time for Grayson's chemo treatments, a family friend sent him a Spider-Man costume for courage. The reactions of people in that hospital was incredible. Like, people would stop and go, oh, my gosh, look at Spider-Man, how cool. And, you know, it, it became less scary for him. Grayson's story exploded on social media. And soon, more people started sending him superhero costumes like Batman, The Flash, and one of Grayson's favorites, Iron Man. My favorite is this one. But his mom told me favorite. something else amazing also happened. And I realized that that suit and those costumes were no longer 
necessarily about making him feel brave, but to bring bravery, strength, joy to other parents, children, doctors, nurses. Nurses like Mary Beth Yannick at C.S. Mott Children's Hospital in Ann Arbor. We all kind of smile, um, not only because he looks so dang cute, but because we realize that Grayson and really all of our pediatric cancer warriors are superheroes. Grayson's outfits and positive outlook inspired so many that his family has decided to start a foundation to give costumes to other kids who might need a little extra help staying strong. CJ, what's the biggest lesson you have learned from that superhero of yours? If this five-year-old who has given all this joy and love to people can show the power of positivity, then I think the message should be give it 110% in everything that you have and don't stop until you get what you want. And the great news is Grayson's latest scans were clear of cancer. He appears to be on the road to recovery. That's NBC Nightly News for this Saturday. I'm Jose diaz Bar. Thank you for the privilege of your time. And good night. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.